Welcome to Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere with your host, Chris Parker. And hello, this is Chris Parker back again. And um, I have another very special guest, Frank Smates, who is part of the Open EXO, the, you know, the Exponential Innovator Community. Um, and I've been delighted to uh, get to know him very recently. Um, his organization, his own company, the House of Innovation, um, is basically coaching startups and scale-ups and doing, you know, helping people make magic. So, Frank, welcome very much to, uh, to the podcast and the video. Great, uh, Chris. Thank you very much for inviting me on this podcast. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here and uh, share a little bit of my experiences in the world of business development and innovation. Um, so, from that background, that's exactly why I'm here. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm coaching and supporting uh, people, entrepreneurs, managers, uh, SMEs, startups with the development of new business and new product market uh, technology combinations. Nice. nice. And, and it's, have you been doing that for uh, quite some time from our previous discussions? This has been a really a, a serious theme in your career. Yes, about more than 25 years ago, yeah. I started with business development uh, when I was still working with Axo Nobel. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a new group formed, uh, which is called, was called uh, business development. And uh, at that time, that was quite uh, peculiar because in that group, everything landed which didn't belong to a business unit, mm -hmm. but which they had thoughts about that it, could, might, that it might grow to something important. So that's where it all started. And in 2000, the first uh, day of this millennium, I started for myself, indeed. Nice. And, and can you unpack that a little bit? Because, um, you know, going into innovation uh, already at that point, that, that was probably a daring move at that time? Or, or how, how did you make that decision to go independent? The decision was made by, for me, in fact. <laughs> okay. Because in, <laughs> yeah, okay. that's how it goes. As it does. In 98, yeah. uh, in fact, the end of that 98, uh, the board of directors of Axe Nobel uh, pulled the axe in the table and said, here it stops. I hope you don't get too much trouble from the airplanes no, flying just over. keep going for it. So they said, uh, we stop with all central uh, research. And new business development was part of that. And uh, so it had to be uh, abolished or span off. Um, and at that time, there was no, uh, not enough ground to do an MBO, mm -hmm. so uh, the whole technology was uh, yeah, dis dismantled and uh, everyone was sent out. Uh, they tried to find other places within the company, but I couldn't find anything that would suit me in the terms of business development. It was quite a unique position, so I decided to start with a company uh, that was uh, pulling on me already for two years at that time to uh, to do the consulting uh, on, on business development. And mm -hmm. that's yeah. how I started. And then in 2003, I completely left that company also and started my house of innovation. Fascinating. Fascinating. And over the period of that time, the definition of innovation has changed. The, the, the society has changed. Um, I'm curious, how do you make decisions you know, as, as an entrepreneur working on the house of innovation, you know, keep, keeping that entity alive. How do you make decisions on, on what to focus on in this whole you know, giant jungle of things to innovate? Yeah, that was a struggle in the beginning. And uh, it has taken me some time. Uh, in the first years were more directed at uh, creating uh, funding, co-funding subsidies mm -hmm. for companies. And um, later on, I decided to concentrate myself on high tech. And that was added later on again with uh, MedTech and AgroTech. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. At that time, it wasn't uh, called high tech so much, but it was more on embedded systems, sensor technology, mechatronics was just coming up very strongly. So that's the area where I started. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. If, Supporting on innovation is something, um, in the beginning, it was more directed on um, arranging finance, arranging co-finance, in fact. 
Um, but gradually that transformed further into uh, um, yeah, the, the, the real support of de uh, developing systems to innovate, developing systems to um, transfer ideas into products in the market. Yeah. yeah. yeah what, what I've appreciated in our conversations is when you talk about, at least, uh, so I'm going to test this with you a little bit. This is my interpretation. When you talk about innovation, it seems to be much more than just the thought, the ideas, but it, you seem to really lean in and, and actually execute and actually create. And that, I think a lot of people seem to sell innovation as a sort of corporate theater of, of you know, yeah, brainstorming. Uh, but but you seem to have a really a track record of, of delivering. So how, what, what's the what's the secret sauce in that? How do how do you make that work? Well, for me, the uh, the definition for innovation is a new idea in the market. So mm -hmm. having a product or a service in the market, then you have an innovation. Before that time, it's just an idea. Yeah, you can work that out. You can work on it. You can develop that but it's still an idea until it lands in the market and people start buying it. Right. Then only right. you have the innovation. So the, the goal is always being present in the market. What, would you agree that it's 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration then? Yeah, you can always discuss on the numbers, but that's, uh, that's about the direction. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Nice. Well, um, yeah. can you, um, and, 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 also my own my own curiosity but also maybe maybe an opportunity for you to to position your your services a bit can you explain a little bit what an engagement would look like like who is your who is your perfect customer what is their perfect problem and and what is the perfect outcome uh, the perfect outcome to start with is uh, being present in the market in a successful way mm -hmm. with a sustainable service or product that uh, is helping mankind further um, that's the, the outcome, um, the, the start of it, um, what's my ideal customer? Um, there's so many ideal customers, uh, all have their own requirements and all have their own uh, specific needs. Mm -hmm. It depends mm -hmm. so much on the technology, on the business they're in, on the business chain they're in, um, how close they are to what's present in the market or how far are they away from it. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the challenge is to find new ways. I mean, um, with every new product, you have to create a new business model, mm -hmm. my opinion. And um, I look at it from uh, a technical commercial point of view. And if it concerns that, I'm the guy who you have to have. If it's more about personal development or team coaching or something like that, there are people that are much better than me. Mm -hmm. So my ideal customer is having some issues with uh, the, the technical commercial kind, uh, side of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, I can help them out with uh, looking from a fresh perspective, uh, bringing in some methodologies and some canvases that will help them to structure their thinking and structure their way of working. Nice. Can, um, I, I know that there's some things that you're working on that, that you can't always share at the moment, but um, can, maybe can you share one of the, one of these um, wild success stories that, that, that you know, when you, when you think back was your perfect project? Um, well, a, a project I'm, uh, I've been working on, which is in fact a successful product um, or a successful story is uh, last year I had a coaching uh, f with a company that was run, set up from, by a few people who came out of the, the college. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had an idea and they wanted to have a social company and um, they had an idea about bringing something to the market, which in fact was quite a nice product. But the whole construction of the company was not really good mm -hmm. i mean these guys were living on half a minimum wage and how they did it i don't know but they did and uh, with that they could build up some market but yeah it wasn't really sustainable 
And I helped them to uh, transfer their whole business to a company that was much more mature in, in bringing this further. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guys got a, a number of the guys uh, got a job over there and uh, came at rest and, and the internal tension disappeared and they were oh, much beautiful. more prone yeah, okay. on, on going forward with the good guidance from someone who, was, who had daily uh, um, input on, on their business. So that, that was quite, quite good in fact and uh, I think it, it was good to dissolve this company. So that, that, that's one side of it. Yeah. The other side of it is that um, I had a customer who was dealing with uh, an, a knowledge institute and uh, they're developing all kinds of things and the, the knowledge institute um, uh, business development uh, group uh, is trying to get the maximum out of it and he was struggling with that. So I, I helped him out in, in structuring his deal making. Mm -hmm. And uh, that brought everything into an acceleration uh, and, and it went very fluently and, and nicely to, to good contracts and he got paid in time and, and everything in spite of the Corona crisis and everything. And in spite of the first threats that they would stop paying. Uh, so. Well, nice. so when you, when you define your space as really the, the technical commercial, the, your, the commercial definition doesn't mean sales of the product or service. It's really the, the commercial domain of the business and even deal making and, and even that M&A aspect of it. It's the, so, business, uh, yeah. the business side of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not so much the commercial but business side, yeah. indeed. Oh, nice. And I'm just curious, the, 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 the individuals out of college or university and they had been hustling and suffering, was it an emotional issue or journey that you had to help them with in order to sort of, you know, give up, so to speak, and, and sell out? Or was this really seen as a, a, a beautiful next horizon? Like, you know, I, I can imagine that, would be, that those must have been tough discussions. But yeah, what I did is I kept uh, the picture on the horizon sharp. Mm -hmm where are you standing in five years from now and how do you achieve that? And I guided them mm -hmm. to get a picture of how that looked like. And in that picture, they saw that the way to get there was blocked by the way they were acting at that moment. Mm -hmm. So they had to find a new way to get there because they were still having uh, a warm heart for their technology and then their proposition. But the internal tensions were building up so fast that I said, oh, you have to step back now. And from each person, look at what are you going to bring there and how do you do that? And um, addressing the needs which they couldn't fulfill amongst each other they could fulfill that if they could bring it to another party. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so with that, the transfer was made much easier. Nice. And uh, I can, I, you know, having known you, you know, not super closely, but for a bit, yeah, you, you do have this trusting, you know, um, coaching approach. Like I can imagine that, you know, having that conversation with you, uh, would be you know probably more possible with some other people because it's um, also with your experience and your and your outlook. I'm curious, is this is this um, I'm going to go down the EXO exponential organization path now? So we're we're going a little off our script, um, yeah. but the, a lot of the um, exponential organization work that I've seen is um, uh, people coming up with ways to, you know, benefit humanity and, you know, problem solution definitions, and then leaning in a lot on the, on the technical side. Um, I can imagine that your sort of business acumen and that, that commercial perspective um, could really benefit. Can, can you share a little bit on why you're spending your precious time investing in the EXO community and, and, and I guess, what do you hope to give to the community and, and what do you hope to, hope to get? 
when I got uh, acquainted with EXO, it was for me a sort of coming home feeling. Mm. Why? The reason is because I'm a backcaster. A back? I'm not a forecaster. I'm a okay. backcaster. <laughs> okay. Not a forecaster. Do, do tell. The, the point, the, the way in which I have been working for so many years already is that I try to figure out how does the world work in 5, 10, 15, 30 years from now. What is there? How does it work? How do people interact? How does society function? Mm -hmm. And try to find out what is my place there and help other people to do the same thing. So what is your place in that environment? And from there, I can, you can trace back what you need to get there. Same as uh, Elon Musk is doing uh, with his, uh, mm -hmm. his SpaceX uh, thing. Um, so when I came into the EXO community, I finally found a lot of people who were doing in fact the same thing. They look at the trends, they look at the developments, they try to imagine the future in a better way. Mm -hmm. And to imagine the future, how it will work. And uh, that was for me the coming home. So that was touching base for me and then that's what I want to further explore. On top of that, what I found very good in the EXO community is that they have developed some templates along which you can work mm -hmm. to identify what are the trends that I have to take care of, that I have to look at, and, and how do I develop a template which allows me flexibility in steering in another direction if there was too much pressure from another side. So that makes it very um, useful for me for helping my customers. Um, and uh, well, with this community, which is uh, a very positive community, uh, uh, looking at planet, people, and then a long time nothing, and only then profit. Um, I think we have a very good uh, network that I can always tap into and get other specialists from. It's, it's, a, it's a, a brilliant network. Um, the thinkers and doers and the, the mix of futurists and very practical people. Um, for, for those that um, are listening that, that are not familiar with exponential organizations, there's a book of the same name um, that you can find everywhere. Um, there's also a follow-up book called Exponential Transformations. And then there's a, a, essentially an open community of exponential thinkers and doers called Open EXO, Open Exponential Organizations, at openexo.com. And, and on there, there's a, um, well, you can register for free, and then there's a foundations course and certification you can do for free just to, you know, because they're really looking to educate the world and, and help um, as many, I, I think, startups, initiatives, ideas, um, take advantage of, of exponential attributes, technologies, mindset, in order to improve the world. So, um, so big, big plug for OpenEXO there. Um, no, no, beautiful, beautiful. And um, maybe we can tease a little bit, so if, you, if you're okay with this, because um, in November, we're thinking about doing a, uh, an EXO conference for the Benelux region. Um, yes. Can you, can you share a little bit on your, because this was your idea, what, what, was your, what is your dream and ambition for that? moments here in the region to make people aware of what's going on in the outside world uh, everyone mm. is so much busy with day-to-day -day practice and not, especially now getting back into business um, where you have the feeling the world has changed but i can't see it mm. so what i want to bring is a lamp to this community to see look around and now you can see yeah yeah and take your advantage and uh, there are plenty of people willing to help you to to sort that out it's not necessarily me plenty of people that can help you out and can guide you to get into a much more resilient state of affairs mm -hmm. that even if there is a second covid uh, epidemic or pandemic or whatever you have 
um, if there is a crisis, if there is uh, a huge setback in the economy, you will have your tools to to deal with that. Yeah, and my, yeah, my, you know, there's a group of us um, sort of planning that, if you will, or, or picturing that. And my hope is it will not only be, you know, talking heads like this, but also, um, you know, hopefully in person and also practical. So, so get some initiatives that people are actually doing um, yeah. and, and wrap the community and the energy around that and have that, you know, get, how to give that a, a boost. So, so great. That, sorry for that um, path, side path down the, down the EXO uh, rabbit hole, but um, that's what was one of the bonding factors between you and I. Yes. Um, so coming back to your business, um, you, you are wor working with yourself, I think, or, or maybe, maybe a network, but um, for a, a solopreneur or an entrepreneur that's, that's essentially knowledge-based, how do you, what are your, what are your tactics on continuing to, to grow your business, either in, in, in scale of business or in quality of work? How, how do you, how have you been able to perfect that over time? Well, that's something uh, I'm still working on. Um. <laughs> that, wait, wait, okay, look, we need to stop now because, okay, if there's no silver bullet for that one, no, no, I think, I think that's, no. uh, I think but everyone is always the, working on that. Yeah, well, the, to be honest, I restarted my own company, in fact, in 2000, end of 2018, because in the 11 years before that, I had uh, about 70% of my time dedicated as being a business developer in a knowledge institute hmm. in, the valor in the valorization, in the uh, TTO department. Um, so that took up quite a lot of time and uh, Alongside, uh, I established uh, a, new, a new company for myself to develop a specific product that I wanted to uh, check to, to bring to the market as an intermediary product between what people are doing now and full automation. So that was quite something, um, which failed, unfortunately, for technical reasons. And um, I had to stop that also in the end of 2018. So then I decided now I'm going back to my own house of innovation and then to reinstall everything. So I'm, um, with a fresh look, I've been taking up things. I've done quite a lot of courses on that. And the main thing is, in fact, uh, you have to prove the world that you are, uh, that you have some authority in the field you're busy in. So I'm working on that with uh, uh, developing systems in the background that uh, support that um, with, with um, publications and, and uh, articles, blogs, uh, whatever you have, mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. active in the social networks. And uh, that all adds up to my visibility. Also, I, also uh, I have applied in a number of networks with, uh, where, where you find startups and, and new developments on national and European level, mm -hmm. where I'm registered as a coach. So that will ha that helps in, in being visible in the, in the community and to people that I, I do not know yet. Yeah. I think it's always a constant journey anyways, because the, um, the market's changing as well. So, so things, yep. things are, are evolving. So um, now regarding you know, reaching out to you because we, we still have another you know five six minutes left. But um, if people want to keep keep up to date and, and also maybe hear about the um, the EXO conference uh, possibly in November, can they? Is, I, I'm looking at your website. Is there a newsletter option there, or is there another way? No, that's not yet. I okay. do some articles there. Uh, yeah. The main channel along which I communicate is uh, at the moment LinkedIn. My LinkedIn okay. profile, Frank. Uh, stroke smates yeah um, okay. that's very easy my name with a hyphen in between and um, well house of innovation dot nl is the website that people can have a look at uh, also yeah nice okay so um, I will ensure we uh, put both of those links in in the show notes and in the, in the, in the information on this as well so um, nice can, can you I'm just really curious about um, 
Someone said recently that um, startups are, are hard to work with because they have no money and they're very high maintenance. Um, so I'm curious if you think that's true or not. Um, and, and in either case, how, how do you manage to deliver value um, in a difficult situation? The start, startups, of course, are low, low cash typically and also are hustling. They're really, really, really busy. So um, how, how, do you, how do you deliver your value, I guess, is my question. Well, um, I deliver my value whatever the cash is. Let me put it that way. Mm. Um, the question, I think, more behind this is how do you get cash um, when you're delivering your value? Mm. And, and there are in the Netherlands uh, and in Europe a number of schemes that uh, people get some extra funding for hiring a coach. <clears throat> I'm, mm -hmm. I'm working through those systems, of course. And sometimes there, is, uh, there are SMEs that say, okay, uh, this is valuable for me, so I just spent some, some money on that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm flexible in the remuneration um, form, um, if that is uh, straight cash or if that's uh, something that uh, will come back in the future once it, it gets successful. Yeah, yeah. I'm not afraid to do that because I'm convinced I can help people to, to make successful uh, product introductions and um, good marketing propositions. Um, so I, I'm very confident that money will come back in due course. Yeah, it's a bit of a, 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 a knowledge I have or belief I have is, you know, if you give first, then, you know, the, it will give back. Um, and I also like the style of being very flexible. I like to also, you know, like pay, pay what you can or pay what you value. Um, it's, I think it's you can make peculiar. it very, yeah. Yeah, it, it's very peculiar that uh, I found that if you give to the world, the world will care for you. Yeah. And it's sometimes amazing where new opportunities come from. Yeah. I just got an inquiry from Saudi Arabia. Great, yeah. So where does that come from? I mean, from my network, yes, but yeah. I never expected that. Yeah. I can probably imagine the names in your network if it's EXO related, but uh, you know, there's some people out there in the no. Middle East doing really cool That wasn't EXO even stuff. EXO related. Oh, okay. oh, great, okay. No, marvelous. So, um, well, Frank, um, um, we're starting to wrap up. So one of the questions I'd love to ask at the end is, is um, about simplifying life or business. Is there? Is, do you can you do you have any tip, technique, book recommendation, anything on what you have done to simplify your life and and make that more productive or more joyful? All my attempts to simplify life have been have, have been resultless. <laughs> life always finds ways to be more complicated than you want it. Yeah. So. To start with that, but, um, or maybe I should say, and, and always yeah. keep the, the horizon in the picture because that's where you all want to go. Mm. If you can define sharply what your horizon looks like, people mm. say, okay, I'm in, I'm going to help to achieve that and all bring their own capabilities. So that's always very good. Um, on the road to that horizon, uh, I found a very interesting mechanism. If, the, if there are conflicts and, and you get some tension and you can't see where you find the solution for things, make the playing field bigger. Hmm. Because that allows you to, to think up uh, out of the box thinking. It's not out of the box thinking, it's putting the box in a bigger box. Mm -hmm of putting it outside the box in the field and look at the field yeah, which is, where you can approach the box. Yeah, which is per perhaps, you know, people are thinking of simplifying. Oftentimes that means minimi minimizing, but in this case, expanding can give you more options in order to uh, make it maybe more, more easy or more simple for you to make decisions. So, wow, yeah. Frank, thank you so much. Um, we need to wrap up, but I, th I think we could, could keep talking for, for a lot, lot longer, but we've got this... Um, 30 minute window. Um, thank you so much for, uh, for joining and sharing. Um, My pleasure. I, I will put the uh, LinkedIn and in the, in the website in the notes so then people can uh, keep in touch. Uh, That's great. Uh, particularly if they need some business development done on initiatives uh, with yourself and also the uh, EXO event that we're looking towards in, in November. Right. Yeah, people will meet us there yeah. for sure. Thanks, Lovely. Frank. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. 
Learn more at ebullion.com slash podcast.